Free RTOS tasks. What is the task? It is a C function. It should be run within the infinite loop, like we see on the screen. So it is like a menu while one loop from the main.c file, main function. It can be, this function can be used to generate any number of the tasks, so separate instances. The task has its own part of the stack, so each instance of the task has its own stack and its priority. And the task can be in one of the four states running, only one at the moment, blocked, suspended and ready. Blocked, suspended and ready states are grouped into so-called lists, which are used by the scheduler to select the task to be executed and to manipulate the rest of the tasks and switch between the modes. The task is created and deleted by calling the dedicated API functions. Within the CMC SOS, we have either OS thread create uh, within CMC SOS v1 or within CMC v2, which we are using within this uh, training, OS thread new. To delete within CMC SOS v2, we will use OS thread terminate. Let's have a closer look on the task function. Here on the screen, you can see the typical function template. And uh, within this template, we can specify three areas. The first one, green one, it is so-called task initialization. It will be called only once during the task creation, the first execution of the task. Then the gray zone, it is an endless loop, and uh, it can be executed constantly during the time when the task is in a running state. So we can have a several rollover of this loop, or we can execute part of it depending on the code which we've got inside, and of course the length of the time slice dedicated for the particular task. Then the last part, the pink one, it is the part where we should not land at any time. Because uh, it, if, if we land in this part, it means that there is some problem of the memory allocation and we should have a closer look on the memory resources, especially on the stack areas of the tasks. Let's have a closer look on the task structure. A task consists of three parts, the program code located in flash and two RAM areas, a stack, which can be accessed by the stack pointer and uh, it holds all the temporary variables used by the task during its execution. The second RAM area, which is used by the task, is a so-called task control block, TCB, and it is in fact a data structure assigned to the task during its creation. It contains its status, information of the task, including the stack pointer, task priority, current task status, and as well the connection between the task and other operating system components, like for example mutexes. We need two calls of PV port malloc, so two memory allocations, during the first task creation. The first one allocates the task control block, the second one allocates the task stack. The process of saving the context of the task while it is being suspended or it is sent to ready state from running state is called context switching. Here we can see the example of the task control block TCB. It is taken from the tasks.c file from the FreeRTS implementation in version 8.1.2. We will focus on the main components on the next slides. Let's have a closer look at the task control block structure. It is defined within task.c file. First thing worth to remember is the scalability of this structure. If you enable more operating system components, like mutexes, software timers, some task notifications, you might expect that each task control block will be increased as well. Please have a look below. If you use mutexes by setting control use mutexes to 1 within freertos config.h file, you will find two more words within each task control block. The second example is uh, using a task notification, which is allow adding one word and one byte per task within its TCB. Next important point is the, let's say, the first component of the task control block, which is widely used during the context switch. It is the current location of the task stack. It is used during the context switch process to know where it is the last state of the task stored within its uh, own stack. Then we can find the name of the list, uh, so the group of the tasks where the task is assigned, its current priority and pointer to the beginning of its own stack. There is as well a task name, it's a let's say text string used for the descriptive name of the task, which has been used during its creation. 
as you remember from the previous slides, uh, the list of the fields within TCB is much longer. I just focus on the most important ones here. Task can be present in one of the four states. After its creation, it is always in a ready state. Task is ready to be executed, but it is not currently executing because a different task with equal or higher priority is running. The task can be selected by the scheduler to be running, and in this case it is changing its state to run up state. It can come back to ready state once its time slice elapses, or it will decide to come back to the ready state, or it is preempted by the task with higher priority. In all of the cases, scheduler is making the decision which task should be executed. So we've got ready state, we've got run state. The third one is a blocked state. Blocked state is a state of the task when the task is waiting for something. Either on semaphore or mutex or some data on the queue, or it is waiting for some particular time, so-called delay. And after those components will appear, it is unblocked and it is coming back to the ready state. The last state of the task, possible state of the task, is a suspended one. Suspended is a task when it is not available for scheduling, but it is still kept in the memory. To put task into the suspended mode, we need to execute APA function from a different task or the, the, the task itself. And to come back from the suspend mode, we need to call a function as well. There is a fifth state not mentioned here. It is so-called delete state. In delete state, the task is removed from all of the lists and in a next execution of so-called idle state, idle task, the memory of this task is released from the complete memory area. Task states are coded within OS thread state underscore T enumeration. Here in the table, we can see the coding of each state with value. So we can see thread inactive, ready, running, blocked, terminated, so mentioned deleted. There is as well the thread error in case of an error of the task and uh, there is a reserved field as well. Let's focus a while on the thread or task attributes which are defined within a structure of type OS thread at underscore t within cmc's underscore os2.h file. So this is a typical for cmc's OS in version 2 and it contains all of the information which are necessary to create a new task and some of them we need to specify by our own during the task creation and some of them are filled by the code after the task creation. So let's say the first one is a name of the task of the thread then the second one which we need to specify is a stack size which would be dedicated for the given task and its priority. So those three arguments we need to specify within this uh, structure before task creation and then use an address of this structure to create a new task. Then during, let's say, task creation, the rest of the fields will be filled. So for example, attribute bits, then pointer to the thread control block memory area, which would be known after task creation during allocation of two memory areas for the task. So the task control block and its stack. So this pointer would be filled a bit later on after creation of the task. Then the size of the task control block would be filled here as well. It can be done after creation of the task because it will be calculated based on the rest of the components which has been selected within FreeRTOS, usually within FreeRTOS config.h file. As you remember, if we add, for example, mutexes, software timers, task notification, the task control block will be increased. This is why this size is added a bit later on. Then we've got the pointer to the thread or task stack memory area, so the dedicated stack for the task. And in case we are working with the microcontroller based on a core with a trust zone, there is as well the trust zone module identifier in place. So those are the main components within this structure, which are defining the task we are just creating. And just to highlight, during the task creation, we are filling manually or specifying manually three components, name, stack size, and the priority of the task. As you remember, the task can be in one of the states. By default, after the task creation, it is in ready state, so ready to be executed. 
It can be as well uh, within the blocked state while the task is waiting for something. Then it can be uh, in a suspend uh, state where it can uh, it is not taken into the consideration by the scheduler. It can be as well in a run state. Uh, run state uh, is only for one task at the moment. Then uh, we have not specified it before. There is as well the termination group. Uh, which contains the list of the task group of the tasks which has been terminated which has been deleted but the memory blocked by those tasks are not uh, let's say released uh, so all of the modes uh, has its own uh, list which contains the group of the task which is within current group so for example we've got the ready tasks list uh, we've got uh, tasks waiting terminal termination list we've got a suspended task list we've got a pending ready task list we've got a delayed task list and we've got a overflow delayed task list so this is uh, this is let's say the group of the lists which uh, is accessible by the scheduler and uh, this is the role of the scheduler to manage the tasks and to migrate the tasks among those lists and move them from one list to the other uh, depending on the on the current state of the task and uh, the effect of the interrupt or the context switch uh, this is how it is managed within freer toys the management of the lists is handled within list.c and list.h file during task creation we are specifying as well the importance of the task it is specified by its priority. Lower number means lower priority within freer to s and uh, the priority is set during task creation and can be changed during the execution of the code. We can read the priority of a given task using its handler and we can decrease and increase the priority level. Please remember that uh, the peak number of the priorities within the operating system means that we will increase the memory usage of the operating system itself because we will need a bigger amount of memory for the stack. The scheduler activates the task that is, has the highest priority of all of the tasks within the ready state. The order of execution of the task depends on, the, on its priority like we said before and uh, what is important is that a task with higher priority can preempt the running task if config use preemption within freertest config.h file is set to one otherwise we will work in so-called cooperative mode and we will need to wait until the currently executed task will finish its job we will decide by himself to finish the job so this is important in case of any issues with, uh, with the preemption to check whether this config use preemption is set to one or not cleared. Then the each priority uh, which is assigned uh, to the task should be in the range between zero and max priorities minus one. So this is defined within freer to as config.h file, this max priorities. And the important message is that the idle task has uh, the priority called TSK idle priority. It is defined as well within task.h file. Here is the list of the priorities which are available within a CMC's OS v2. It is much extended list versus CMC's OS v1. And in terms of the naming, it is much more complex than uh, native uh, freer OS API. So the priorities are stored within the enumeration called OS priority underscore T. We can find it within CMC's underscore OS dot H file. And uh, we are starting from OS priority none, uh, which is not initialized, it is value zero. Then we've got OS priority idle. This is a value one. It is reserved for idle thread. Then we've got, the, let's say, the space between two and seven, not used. And... Uh, number eight uh, of the priority is used for us priority low then we've got uh, us priority low one to seven and we've got the group os priority below normal then there is os priority normal above normal high real time and uh, os priority isr it is reserved for interrupt routines and its level is 56 if there is an issue with the priority, we will have uh, the value minus one. 
So the system cannot determine what is the priority level or the level used for the creation of the component is illegal one. So it is good to monitor the value which is read, for example, from the task, whether the priority is on a correct level. When we are using the CMCSOS, it is converting, in fact, those naming convention into the FreeRTOS API ones. So please monitor carefully which values are returned by the OS functions. The values which would be returned by CMCSOS would be, of course, within this OS priority enumeration list. But if you will go into the API functions of FreeRTOS, please remember that in between we've got the conversion between those priority list and numbers and FreeRTOS APIs. Let's have a look at how we can create a new task within the code. Usually, once using STM32CubeMX or STM32CubeIDE code generators, those operations are performed for us within generated code. But as it is possible to add the tasks from the code, it is good to know how to do it. To create a task, we should first define and fill the structure of type OSTRED at ATTR underscore T, which contains main parameters of the task, like its name, its tag size, given in bytes, and its priority. There are more components within this structure, but those components, those fields are filled automatically during the task creation. Then we should declare a function which would be assigned to the task and executed when the task will be in run mode. This function should accept single argument, pointer to any type, and return no value. Please remember that within this function body there should be an endless loop implemented as we should never exit from the task function. Then we should execute a function which would create a task. For this we will use so within CMCSOS v2 OS treat new function. As arguments we will specify task function name, which would be called during task execution. Argument we would like to pass to the task function. Usually we will not send an argument so we can specify null over there. And address of the structure with uh, task parameters. It is this uh, OS thread ATTR underscore T type structure, which we have discussed a few minutes ago. As a return value of OS treat new function used for task creation, we should receive an ID for the new task. It is type OS treat ID underscore T. In case we will receive null, it means that there was an error during task creation. Usually it is an information about issues with memory allocation. So the first thing we should verify whether we have enough memory with an operating system heap. Please remember that during task creation, two memory areas will be allocated. TCB, task control block, which is more or less 100 bytes, and stack of the task. Let's focus for a while on an API dedicated for tasks within CMC's OS v2. So the task has its own handler. It is OS treat ID underscore T type value and it is returned while we are creating the task and we are trying to get the currently running task ID. To create the task we need a function OS treat new which is accepting three arguments. The first one is a pointer to the function which would be called during task execution. Then the second one is a pointer to any type of the argument which can be passed to this function during its execution. Usually it is not used, so we are specifying null in this field. And the third one is a pointer to the structure with the attributes specified for the task we are creating. Those attributes are the name, the tag size, and the priority of the created task. Then to delete the task, we need to execute the function OS treat terminate, and there is only one argument, it is an ID of the thread we would like to terminate. If we would like to terminate the task which is currently executed, it is enough to specify the null argument instead of ID of the task. Important message is to have a look on the status returned by this function. So this is OS status underscore T. It is an information whether the function has been successfully finished or there were some issues. So it is a good practice to monitor this OS status underscore T value after the call of the function. 
done. The next function is a function which is returning back the task ID. So this is the function OS thread to get ID without an argument because it's returning back the ID of currently run task. And then if you would like to have a task name, uh, we have a dedicated function OS thread get name. And then we need to specify the ID of the task, the handler of the task you would like to have the name. Next functions dedicated to tasks within CMC SOS V2 API. Yield task. So the function OS treat yield without argument. It is the function which should be called by the task within its uh, function. And uh, it is uh, sending the task uh, from run state to the ready state. It is a clear information that the job has been done by the function and there is no need to block the time dedicated within the time slice and the task would like to give the space to the, for the next one from the ready list. Please remember that this is movement of the task from run to ready state. So in case of the task with higher priority, the effect would be the following that uh, we will go for a while to the ready state and come back immediately to the run state as a the task with the highest possible priority to be executed. And so this uh, yield, uh, yielding uh, is effective uh, in case we've got uh, at least few tasks with an ready state on the same priority and we just would like to split the time the most effective way. Then the second function, OS Street Resume, it is the function which is allowing us to, to send the task from suspend mode suspend group to the red group, ready mode. We can execute it from other task body function and it requires from us only the thread ID. So identification of the task you would like to send from suspend to ready group. So it could be visible by the scheduler again. What is important is that both of the functions, yield and resume, are returning uh, OS status underscore T value, which is giving us information whether the function has been successfully executed or there were some issues within its execution. So it is important to monitor the return value and check whether it was successful or not. The next function is OS treat get state, which is uh, returning back the state within which one is uh, the selected task. So the only argument is a task ID, uh, which we are checking. And then the next one is a suspend task, which is um, the complementary function for the resume task. Suspend task means that we would like to send one of the tasks from ready group or from blocked group into the suspend group. So to remove it from the interest of the scheduler, because, for example, the task is not effective for a longer period of time. So to suspend the task, to send it to the suspend group, we need to execute OS treat suspend with the task ID. Then uh, we've got two functions which are suspending and resuming all of the tasks which are in the ready state. So the first one, resume all the tasks, we should execute OS treat resume all without argument. And uh, to suspend all the tasks, so we need to execute OS treat suspend all without any arguments. So this is in fact freezing for a while and interrupting uh, uh, at scale and, and uh, operating system without uh, blocking the interrupts of the system. Next group of the task API within CMC size v2. So we've got a dedicated function to get the stack size of the task. So this is our thread get stack size where we need to specify the handler or let's say the ID of the thread or the task uh, we would like to check its, its uh, tag size. Then uh, we can check uh, the available stack space for a thread based on a stack watermark. So for this we've got OS thread get stack space. So this is amount of the space remaining uh, for, the, for the given task. Then we can change the priority of the task uh, using function OS thread set priority. And then we need to specify the ID of the task, of the thread. And then we need to specify its priority, the new priority. And important is to really control the value of this new priority and control the return status of this function to be sure that the value we just specified is in line with the settings of the complete system, especially when the maximum value of the priority is specified in freertsconfig.h5.
then we can check what is the current priority of the given task using osthread get priority function and the only argument is a id of the task of the thread we would like to check the priority and the return value of this function is uh, the priority value then we can terminate execution of currently running task uh, by deleting it so for this we've got the os thread exit function and uh, if we would like to terminate any other task uh, we need to, to to use the function os thread terminate when the argument is a thread id here you can see the summary of the functions available in different APIs for FreeRTOS. So in the first column, you can see the functions which are visible within CMC's OS API in version 1. In the middle, there is a currently used in this training CMC's OS API version 2. And on the right side, there is a FreeRTOS native API. So as you can see, the, the list is quite complete and uh, most of the functions uh, from the currently used CMC's OS is calling early the functions from original FreeRTOS API. As an example, OS kernel start is calling vtask start scheduler. OS treat new, it is calling xtask create. OS delay is calling vtask delay. Thank you for watching this video.